The article on the screen behind me is from a publication called Evolution, Education and Outreach. Human races are not like dog breeds, refuting a race at an analogy. Heather L. Norton, Ellen E. Quillen, Abigail Wee Bigham, Laurel Elm Pearson and Holsey Dunsworth. In 1956, evolutionary biologist J.B.S. Haldane posed a question to anthropologists, are the biological differences between human groups comparable with those between groups of domestic animals such as greyhounds and bulldogs? This article goes on to try and refute this. It's a good thing it does, as Haldane's question has, in recent years, become a favourite of all right and racist pundits on the internet, you t- try to use it to suggest the inherent um, sim- dissimilarities of black people to white people and start introducing their own spin on this sort of stuff by suggesting that black people are more violent, more aggressive, less inclined to be trainable, etc., etc. Before we get to how day, though, or this article, I'm going to talk about a man named Lysenko. You'll see why in a moment. Trofim Lysenko was a famous Soviet scientist who had a, an impact on Soviet history that was tragic. He is responsible for the death of millions of people in both the Soviet Union and China. For years he was regarded with great dislike and distaste in even in the Soviet Union, although in recent years his reputation seems to have be, undergone something of a rehabilitation. I'm going to read out this article from The Atlantic about him. Although it's impossible to say for sure, Trofim Lysenko probably killed more human beings than any individual scientist in history. Other dubious scientific achievements have cut thousands upon thousands of lives short. Dynamite, poison gas, atomic bombs. But Lysenko, a Soviet biologist, condemned perhaps millions of people to starvation through bogus agricultural research, and did so without hesitation. Only guns and gunpowder, the collective product of many researchers over several centuries, can match such damage. Having growing up desperately poor at the start of the 20th century, Lysenko believed wholeheartedly in the promise of the communist revolution. Indeed he did. However, he decided to brush away all previous um, knowledge of biology or um, investigation of genetics and work on Lamarckian lines, rather, which became neo-Darwinist. As a result, he had a big impact on Haldane, Bernal, and a number of other British and American scientists. So whenever you read stuff by Haldane about dogs, or Bernal who can come out with some similar types of comments, you will f- f- see Lysenko echoing there. Lysenko is a hidden force driving this sort of stuff. This is why, when people introduce Haldane's famous quote about dogs, it is very, very, very wise to research what's behind it. Not just to take the, the, the nicely turned phrase of a pundit attempting to push racism. There are many pundits doing this on the internet at the moment, borrowing a line here and a line there from people like Haldane, and attempting to show how Those black people will never be like us, blah, blah, blah. Now, in the next section, I'm going to read out an article refuting Haldane. Well, some of it, anyway. It's rather lengthy. I won't read all of it. For the end of this presentation, I'm going to read a little bit out of the article mentioned at the beginning. Not all of it. It's a very, very long article. But I'll read the introduction, some sections from the middle and the concluding remarks. It's by Heather L. Norton, Eleni Quillen, Abigail W. Bigham, Laurel L. Pearson, and Holly Dunsworth to reiterate, and was first published in Evolution, Education, and Outreach. In 1956, evolutionary biologist J.B.S. Haldane posed a question to anthropologists. Are the biological differences between human bogs droops comparable with those between groups of domestic animals, such as greyhounds and, um, greyhounds and bulldogs? It reads as if it was posted on social media today. The analogy comparing human races to dog breeds is not only widespread in history and pop culture, but also sounds like scientific justification for eschewing the social construction of race, which is exactly what it's been come for. The numerous pundits and 
alt-right and groups and people bemoaning the loss of traditional society, blah, 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 who've seized on it to try and start rousing it and increase tension. Speaking to everyone without expert levels of familiarity with this material, we investigate whether the drug breed analogy for human race stands up to biology. It does not. Groups of humans that are culturally labelled as races differ in population, structure, genotype, phenotype relationships, and phenotypic diversity from breeds of dogs in unsurprising ways, given how artificial selection has shaped the evolution of dogs and not humans. Our demonstration complements vast body of existing knowledge about how human races differ in fundamental social, cultural, historical and political ways from categories of non-human animals. Notice that, non-human animals, the comparison to dogs, which seeks to invoke the idea that black people are like a breed of dog, is instantly a way to dehumanise people. A favourite of people attempting to find and create a scapegoat throughout history. By the end of this paper, readers will understand how the assumption that human race is the same as dog breeds is a racist strategy for justifying social, political and economic equality. Here's another section. Both Haldane's question and the pop culture comparison of human races to dog breeds needle at the debate occurring outside of anthropology and largely outside of academia over the biological basis for race. These discussions are heavily influenced by the historical conception in science, biology, anthropology of race has been synonymous with or an acceptable term for a variation in human biology at the group or population level, but that view no longer holds. Within contemporary anthropology, there is near consensus that race is more of a social construct and thus a sociocultural concept than it is a biological concept. According to a basur by Wagner et al. in 2017, the majority of professional anthropologists' respondents, totaling 3,286, disagreed with the following statements. The human population may be subdivided into biological races. 86% disagreed. There is a lot of confusion over what we say when we mean, say we mean when we say race is a construction. Much of the problem involves the fact that in order to rebut scientific racism publicly, we're often obliged to accept the dichotomy of nature and culture that we now realise to be an oversimplification. But since that dichotomy remains a fixture of popular science and a public discourse, we often say have to say, no, it's the opposite, it's culture. Where well, we would really like to say something more nuanced. To a first approximation, then, we mean that unlike a naively, a naively regarded fact of nature, which is presumably there to be observed and transparently understood, race is a product of history. And though it is often associated with variation in biological form, it is inherited according to cultural, not biological rules. And thus, rather than seeing race as a simple product of nature, it's better understood as a product of nature and culture, the ascription of arbitrary cultural meaning to patterns of human diversity. I'm going to read the conclusion to this, and I do recommend this article instead of the wonderful two-line pundits or, uh, attempting to take a line of out of something and create a narrative out of tissue-thin material. Concluding remarks, this paper bridges academic literature and popular culture. In reaction to notions of race as a social construct, none experts may feel justified in holding the opposing belief that race is just biology. Not an insignificant proportion of Americans refuse mainstream academic knowledge. Our paper offers a way forward for those caught up in that culture regarding race. This paper is not primarily for the fanatics who are unlikely to change their views, but instead it's for onlookers who might be so unfamiliar with these issues that they are either susceptible to unscientific and or racist thinking as they are unequipped to refute it. And this is exactly, in my view, what pundits and YouTube commenters attempting to tell us about how black people are like particular breeds of dog or, or advancing ludicrous theories about people coming in hotter areas being more barbarous are engaging in. They pick one or two lines out of an old topic and an, an old system of thought, throw it up and know that often those reading will not be really equipped to refute it. They are only interest really encouraging, like us type views.